Finally, after a long time of waiting, I've got my hands on a Sony A7 Mark IV. It's possibly one of the most popular cameras on the market right now, especially in the world of Sony. And with me being so invested in Sony, I thought it was about time I got my hands on one of these. I haven't bought this just yet. I've actually got it out on a hire over the weekend because I'm doing a wedding and I want to see how they go up against the Sony A7S 3s when I'm shooting photo and video for weddings. I've actually hired the camera from an ironically named company called Hyra Camera down south in the UK. And they've been kind enough to send it out to me a day early at no extra charge. And I thought it'd be good to go through the camera settings, what I use for when it comes to me doing any of the weddings. So this camera is fresh out of the box and we've set it up from complete scratch. Some of the settings are really generic. Some things are gonna be more customized for the stuff which I'm gonna be needing. But regardless, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get the most out of your Sony A7 Mark IV. So first off, we're going to be setting up all the photo options. So I've changed this to aperture priority and then also the photo mode over on the top. It doesn't matter whether you want to shoot in manual or aperture priority. To be fair, I normally shoot in manual when it comes to any of the weddings. We're going to press the menu button, go to the red shooting menu, go to image quality. We're not going to worry about the JPEG or HEIF set switch because we're not going to need that. We're going to be shooting in RAW. So come down to image quality settings. We're going to change the file format to RAW. Uh, we're going to come down to RAW file type. I'm going to go to uncompressed RAW. And then we're also going to do record media settings while we're here. So we're going to record everything onto simultaneous recording for both of them. Aspect ratio, we're going to keep at three to two. And then file format for the video, we're going to go to XAVC S4K. Now, if you want, you can shoot in XAVC HS4K. That's a H265 codec, and it should work better with most computers. They say it retains more information than what the H.264 codec does, but unfortunately the H.265 codec doesn't shoot at 25 frames a second, it shoots at 50 frames a second, so it won't work with the timeline that we normally work with. If you want to take the quality footage up one step further, you can come down to the XAVC SI 4K codec, but if you choose that codec and you want to shoot in any S and Q mode, then you will need a CF Express Type-A card. And because the Sony a7 IV only has one slot for the CF Express Type-A, and at weddings, we we like to simultaneously record onto two different memory cards. So we use two V90 SD cards. So in that case, we can only use the XAVCS H264 codec. Next up, we're gonna come down to movie settings. We're gonna change the frame rate to 25p and then make sure that this is 140 megabytes per second, 422 10-bit, so we're getting as much information out of the sensor as possible. None of this stuff really matters for myself. Color size, make sure it's sRGB. Coming down to the next page, we've already looked at record media settings, and the next two bits we don't need to worry about. Coming down to menu three, file and folder settings, we do actually change this. We actually change the file name to display A74, A73, A7S at the beginning of the files. We just do that for our own peace of mind, so when we get everything over to Lightroom or any other editor, software we can see exactly which camera that file has come from coming down iptc information copyright right serial number we don't worry about any of that camera set memory i actually don't use any memory settings in any of the cameras that i have but this is where you would come when you've got like your aperture priority setting or whatever shooting mode that you're using you can come in here you can choose which memory bank you want to store it in and then hit okay and it'll store it to that and then you can easily access it with the dial on top USB streaming, we're not worried about that. Drive mode, we're gonna come over to drive mode and we're gonna change this to high plus, just so when we're doing a wedding, when it comes to like any of the confetti stuff, we can hold down that button and make sure we get a shot. It's also good when you're doing any kind of portraits because if you just take one photo and you've got a group of people, sometimes, pretty much guaranteed every time someone's got their eyes shut if you were to only take one photo. If you were to take four, five, six photos, at least one of them should have all of their eyes open and the face smiling. And if you've been incredibly unlucky, you can take two of the photos, stick it into Photoshop and merge it into one. When it comes to silent mode, we actually turn that off. We don't like to use any kind of silent mode when we're doing any kind of weddings or anything which is very commercial because you're having to deal with different kind of lighting. It's the same situation when you come down to shutter type. We also make that to mechanical shutter and I'll explain why in just a moment. Next, we come down to anti-flicker set. We're gonna change that from off to on. And the reason we're gonna do that and also use a mechanical shutter is so we don't get any banding in any of the images. Sometimes you may have noticed it that when you're inside and you're taking photos and you've got fluorescent lighting tubes and the ceiling or something. There are a few ways to improve the image if you get a photo like that, but the best way to do it is just to have anti-flicker shooting mode turned on, and you can only do that if you're using a mechanical shutter, which isn't silent. Going back to the settings, going down, steady shot, we always make sure it's turned on, and steady shot adjust, obviously keep it on auto, so it adjusts to whatever lens you've got on the camera at that moment in time. The zoom settings, we don't really touch, but coming down to grid line display, we do turn that on, so you get the rule of thirds going across the camera like so.
So next up, we're gonna go into exposure and color. So ISO, obviously we're gonna change that as we go. So it doesn't matter what you set that to. ISO range limit, we do change that. This is always really useful because you can set your ISO to auto and then just control the aperture. Your camera will work out the best ISO and shutter speed that it needs to be able to take the photo and it will set it accordingly. The thing is, the higher the ISO, obviously the more noise you get in your image. So sometimes you don't want it to go above a certain ISO. So that's where you can come over to this and actually change the ISO. So we're gonna set it to around 16,000 and leave it as that. That's still, even in today's cameras, a fairly nice, comfortable ISO to set it to. But then how does your camera know whether to drag the shutter out a little bit or increase the ISO? Well, that's where the next part comes in. So when you set your ISO to auto, you can then choose a minimum shutter speed. So what we're gonna do is set the ISO auto minimum shutter speed to 250 because that's literally the least I would go to in any of the lenses that I shoot with. When it comes to a wedding, you've got people moving around, people walking and stuff. You want to make sure you capture everything as sharp as possible. 250th of a second shutter speed is still on the border, but I would still feel comfortable doing that. And because you've got such a high ISO to work with, um, and then we're also gonna be using primes, you shouldn't ever really hit a point where you are shooting at one over 250th of a second. And if you are, it's probably time to start getting a flash on your camera. Metering mode is entirely dependent on how you feel when it comes to shooting. Most of the time, I actually just leave it on multi because that gives you a rough idea of the whole image. But I use a combination of this and also using zebras to make sure that everything is underexposed to the right amount. Face priority in meter mode, I leave that to on because obviously if you're using a backlit situation, you kind of want your camera to know that things are being backlit and you may need to increase the exposure ever so slightly to make sure that the person's face is obviously exposed correctly. Everything else on this page, I'll leave as standard. When it comes to flashes, I don't touch anything to do with flash settings because you use a manual flash. I don't expose through the lens or anything like that. So all of that, I leave as standard. When it comes to white balance, most of the time you want to change it depending on what kind of environment you're in. But when it comes to auto white balance, which sometimes I do shoot in when I'm doing video at weddings, I come over to priority set in auto white balance and I change that to ambient white. Shutter auto white balance lock is always really useful. I've done a video all about auto white balance locks very recently about the a7 IV and the a7S III, so I'll leave a link to that just up here if you want to watch that. But I change that to continuous shutting, so when you're shooting lots of photos, just shooting them off, spamming that shutter button, you ain't got to worry about the auto white balance changing if anything else in your scene changes and then moving into color and tone and this is where it gets really interesting because this is where we're going to set our pitch profiles i've done a video all about my favorite pitch profiles for the sony cameras especially the a7 IV and the a7s3 so once again i'll leave a link up here if you want to watch that or down there in the description box but when it comes to specifically weddings i actually only use one pitch profile and it's actually set under pitch profile 11 because i use a cinetone now you can set any of the pitch profiles to whatever you want you don't have to set pitch profile 11 to only be a cinetone. You can set it to pitch profile one. But very briefly, to go through our pitch profile, black gamma, leave it at middle and zero. Color mode, obviously a cinetone. Saturation, I actually increased to plus five. I leave everything else as standard apart from detail, which I adjust the level to minus five, just to give it a softer look. But obviously adjust your pitch profiles to have whatever you wish and whatever you feel comfortable shooting in. When it comes to zebras, I turn up my zebras on and my zebras are left on all the time. I use zebras to make sure that my sky isn't blown out if I'm wanting to capture the sky and there's no detail in the wedding dress or anything else, any important information in the image, which I can't bring back in post. So when it comes to zebra level, I set that to 100 plus, but only when I'm taking photos and shooting in s -Cinetone. Once again, I've done a video all about how to expose for log and s -Cinetone, and I'll leave a link to that just up here if you want to watch that. As you can probably tell, I've done a lot about Sony cameras. I love Sony. Another setting you'll want to change because the a7 IV does have a problem with overheating is to come over to the yellow suitcase menu, go over to menu eight, which is power setting option. Come to auto power off temp and then change for it from standard to high. This will come up, don't worry about that, just press okay and it'll last for a little bit longer. When it comes to autofocus, I do leave these pretty standard, but I do change the autofocus tracking sensitivity to be responsive. The autofocus illuminator, I don't really use. I actually hate using the autofocus illuminator, but I leave it on because sometimes it can be actually quite useful. One thing I do change is autofocus with shutter. I use back button focusing, which is already set up on all the cameras. You just need to turn it off so it doesn't activate when you're pressing the shutter button. If you want to use autofocus with the shutter, that's fine. Once again, it's just the way I shoot and I find it much easier to focus on my subject 
and then recompose the shot should I need to, rather than having to do it the other way around. Focus area, I normally change that to center fix, but we can change that later on down the line because we are gonna change things in the customized buttons. Focus area color, I always change it red, it's just, just the way I am, but obviously do whatever you wish. And then we're just gonna move down. So face priority and autofocus, obviously you want that on. Face and eye autofocus, obviously you want it to be human, but if you're shooting a bird or shooting an animal, you wanna make it so it's animal or bird, respective to obviously what you're taking photos of. When it comes to peaking display, I don't normally use it because I use autofocus a lot, but when I do, I actually put it to on, I change that to high, and peaking color, you can change that to whatever you want, but I always find red is a really nice, easy color to have, or blue. Rest of the playback options, I just leave, I don't touch any of this stuff, uh, and all the file transfer stuff, I, it doesn't interest me at all. I barely ever use it. If anything, I put it to aeroplane mode, just so saves power I guess like you know they're really good on battery already but let's save a bit more battery why not every display time settings and stuff this should already be set but a top tip is if you're dual shooting on two different cameras or you're shooting with other people make sure before anyone takes a photo that day you change the date and time settings even to the seconds so everything is in sync so when you put everything into Premiere Pro when you put everything into Lightroom you can see exactly when things were taken and then it doesn't mess up the order of any of the files. Obviously, I kind of like this moment in time because my camera, I'm using it there. I'm using another camera up here, but you, know, you get the point. I've told you, you've been warned. So one of the last things I change on any of my Sony cameras is when you come down to the sound option, you wanna come across and change the audio signals to off. The reason for that is you don't get the whole, see, it's silent, nothing, nothing at all. But if I was to turn that back to on and then focus, I can always remember being at a wedding years ago and there was a photographer with a Canon and that did that all the time. And it was the most irritating thing in the world. So I just turned that off. No one likes to be too noisy at a wedding or just anywhere. I just can't stand it. Like, no. Okay, so switching into S and Q mode so we could do all the video settings as well. So what we're gonna do is come over to image quality. we will come down to movie settings. Obviously make sure it's still 10 bit and 25 frames a second. S and Q mode, we're gonna shoot in 25 frames a second and 50 frames a second. So it makes it twice as slow as what it should be. So two times slow motion. Other than that, you're pretty much set up. The only thing left to do is to change your customized button settings. Some of the custom settings I have on my cameras are possibly a little bit weird in comparison to some people. I actually have my right directional button on my wheel set to white balance rather than ISO, which it's marked with. And the reason for that is my original A7, which I learned everything on, it was white balance. And I guess muscle memory has just kind of made it set in stone. So I set on all of my cameras as soon as I get them, this ISO button becomes white balance. I actually have my ISO on the wheel itself. I also changed the top button, which is custom two, uh, to the APS-C and full frame toggle. So I can easily take something like 85 mil into like 120 mil or something like that. And because this is a high megapixel sensor, then you don't need to worry about losing the resolution later on down the line. Another strange setting is the auto exposure lock button on the back. I actually changed the focus area because I don't use auto exposure lock, but having it under my thumb means that I can change the focus area really quickly. So if I'm struggling to get focus, let's say if it's center weighted, I can change it to wide or zone very, very quickly. The last thing you want to change in your Sony a7 IV before you go out and do any kind of photo or video or especially hybrid shooting is to go over to the yellow suitcase menu. You want to go into operation customize where we've been doing all the customized button settings and you want to come down to different set for still and movie and you want to make sure that you select aperture, shutter speed, ISO and also pitch profile. Once you've done that, hit OK. What that's going to allow you to do is set the shutter speed, the ISO and the aperture to be however you want. So let's say for this scene, for instance, we're shooting at 25 frames a second. So we want it to be one over 50, F 2.5 for instance, and ISO 500. And then when you go into photo mode, you want to change that to one over 320th. We're going to go F 1.8 and then we're going to change the ISO to 1250. Then when we go back into video mode, as soon as we do that, it goes back to the previous settings 150, f2.5, ISO 500. So both photo and video mode work entirely independently from each other. This was something I found on the A7S III and it absolutely changed the way I could do photo and video at a wedding, for instance, all at the same time. That was a beast of a video. Hopefully it's helped you out in getting your camera set up and it's definitely helped me out because now this is all set up, ready to go for the weekend for both photography 
and videography all at the same time. I'm gonna be doing some more videos about the a7 IV over the next few weeks, especially comparing it to my trusty a7S Mark III. So if you wanna see all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure you hit the like button as it really helps me out. And if you have subscribed to the channel, I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.